Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to MS Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be looking at how to schedule projects like a pro with MS Project. Uh, we're going to be looking at five simple things that you can do when scheduling that will improve your schedules. I have taught this to thousands of people and I get the same kind of questions all the time. Uh, people have problems with scheduling software. Um, usually, number one, um, they sort of let the software tell them how to schedule. In other words, when they run into a problem, they don't solve the problem. They kind of let the scheduling software make the schedule work, but that's not how they want to run their schedule. That's not a very good situation. Uh, avoid constraints. Well, if you don't know what a constraint is, we're going to show you in a couple of minutes. So if you don't know what a constraint is, hang on and we'll show you. Um, they can be problematic when you put too many of them in a schedule and I generally try to avoid them wherever possible. I'm not going to say never put a constraint, but do try to avoid them. And uh, the next one is organize and group areas of work. You know, if you have a fairly large project, uh, my specialty is construction. So if you have a fairly uh, large uh, project, you want to be able to break it down into components so then you can dive deep into the components and it helps you to organize your work. It doesn't prevent you from doing other things though because you can also do different sorting operations and other things because you can quickly filter the headings out for a period of time if you want to look at your project in a different way. So that's very important to know too. Avoid open M's. I got different videos that I just focus in on that. But I'm just going to uh, superficially go over why you don't want open ends and then you can investigate further on my YouTube channel by subscribing. You'll see I have a whole playlist on MS Project that I dive deeper into various topics. And of course, you want to walk your project through. The scheduling software is a tool to help you visualize what you're trying to accomplish. So it makes sense that as you're doing it and when you've completed it, to actually walk through it. And as you go through the different activities and the sequencing and the order, make sure that it makes sense that this is how you want to run your project. And then if you see something, uh, I don't want to do it this way, change it makes it very easy to do. That's one of the reasons why we want to use scheduling software is that we can make those adjustments. So let's go to Microsoft Project right now and let's see what we can uh, do on those particular headings and topics. So let's go through it. Join me. Okay, we're here in Microsoft Project and I have this sample project of a administrative building up on your screen and if you take a close look, you will see that um, I've got a, a sort of an overarching heading. These, this is what we call our work breakdown structure. Microsoft Project calls it summary tasks. So I've broken it down into a bunch of headings that actually make some sense to me on this particular project. Like at a high level, I've broken it down into pre-construction, construction, and closeout. Very common headings. And when you have a project, that's something that you might want to consider. So I'm kind of driving this that I have headings and I've got areas of work and that's going to help me to break the project down into areas that I want to focus in on. Now, I didn't put too many activities under this particular one. I would normally have uh, more than this on this type of project, but I do have the headings there and you can sort of uh, see them. That allows me to have a good uh, understanding of what I want to do in pre-construction. Now under construction, you can sort of see that, you know, if I roll these up, I've got a series of headings under construction. And this is helping me very much to organize my work. So I've got site mobilization. I've got everything that's in the ground. I've got the slab on grade. I've got superstructure, so the, the structural elements of the building. Then I'm dealing with exterior finishes, building systems, interior finishing, and the landscaping, both the hard and softscaping, if you will, like uh, driveways and curbs and uh, trees and grass and all those things. And so I've got it under headings, and then that allows me to break those down into further areas that I can actually um, take a look at and start breaking down. And then at the lowest level, I've got my activities and they should be linked in the order that I want to run my project. So it's helping me to organize um, the overall project. And, uh, you know, related to a work breakdown structure should be also how you link um, your activities. And you don't want to have uh, activities linked to headings. So you notice that I really don't have any activities 
uh, link to any of my headings. And the reason for that is it just it convolutes how you're looking at the project. You should be thinking, I finish this activity, I start the next activity. I finish that activity, I start the next activity. Or I start this activity and three days after I start this, I start the next activity. So it gives you a good idea of the sequencing. I'm not linking to, I finish this activity, I start this whole area of work. It may be true, but you don't want to start linking those tasks because then you end up with redundancy. You're over linking different tasks. You should link them the way that you want to run your project. And that is thinking from one activity to the next activity. You want to have a continuous flow of work in your project. So you're thinking from that perspective of how you want to construct it in construction or how you want to build it if it's a different type of uh, project, right? Uh, so that's very helpful. You also want to uh, avoid what I call constraints or what Microsoft Project calls constraints. And if you're new to scheduling, people will find that they can do certain things. So for example, they'll see that, oh, there's a calendar here. Huh, what's this? Oh, look at this. I can, what if I click that? Oh, move the task to start on May 17th. Keep the link. Well, you know Tom's going to say keep the link because I don't like to have open ends, things that aren't connected except things that are in headings but not individual activities. So, oh, Tom said that one time. Maybe I'll do that. And I'll click on that. And so then I click OK. And that moves this over a little bit. It changes a bunch of dates. It flags what dates that's impacted on your project. Um, it's also... Uh, if I open everything up so you can see more, because I've got a lot of stuff closed right now, so let's open everything up. I can go to View, and I can go to uh, Outline, and I can say, show me all the subtasks, right? And then it opens everything up. Um, so I can see that this has put a constraint over here. This task has a start no earlier than. So this indicator column with the I, which you'll find in your starting view, which is the entry view. When I click on the square icon box and I right click, it shows me all my different screens, the entry screen. So that indicator column always shows me if I did something special to an activity, like I put a note on it. If I hover over it, it tells me what the note is. If I put a special calendar, and I've done different uh, episodes on calendars, you can check in the notes. And uh, it'll show me anything special. If the activity is done, uh, it'll show me that. So I, I always use this as sort of a flag to say, what's going on here? And I'd see this. Well, the biggest problem with this is it actually put a constraint that says, has a start no earlier than. So that means no matter what happens over here, and if I zoom into this a little bit more, you'll see it um, here. So if I actually zoom there, so we've got that. Now, let's say I shorten this to one day. Watch what happens. If I shorten this to one day and I click over here, it shortens this, but it won't move that because this is not allowed to move any earlier. So when you clicked on that date, it actually put a constraint on this activity. So I know people, a lot of students and a lot of industry people that I work with uh, who maybe didn't have any training in this way, they find that, oh wow, I can click dates. This is cool, I can click whatever dates I want and then uh, that'll set up my schedule. The problem is, depending on the constraints that you put, you're locking things in. It maybe can't move forward or it can't move backwards or it has to be on that date. There are a lot of different constraints. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna avoid that wherever possible. I'm not gonna say never put constraints because there's some times where it might make sense. But you should also notice too that if I put a constraint on an activity, very often it will get rid of the critical path. And the critical path is the longest path through the project. Again, if you wanna have better understanding of critical path, look through some of my other videos and you'll see I have uh, videos dedicated to that. Um, but in brief, the critical path is the longest path. So this path is not on the critical path, it's got some float. And so in this particular case, if I pick a date here and I um, go to, let's say the second, and I say move the task, keep the link. It keeps the link, but everything before it is no longer critical because the program is thinking, well, you really don't have a natural critical path anymore. You've got a constraint, so we won't show the critical path anymore because it's not free flowing. The idea with the critical path is 
when something takes longer and it's on the critical path, it'll push everything out. Or if it's shorter, it'll shorten it up till something else becomes critical. And that's what you really want with scheduling software is to be able to tell what's the impact of this happening. So definitely avoid constraints wherever possible. Now, fortunately, if you have some constraints, they're easy enough to remove. You double click on the actual activity, brings up the task information box, go to the advanced tab and see where it says constraint type. As soon as possible is the default. That's the same as no constraint. Click OK and that will disappear. Double click here uh, and look at as soon as possible. Go from start no earlier than. You can see there's a whole bunch of other constraints that, you, that can be placed on these activities. Put it there and that allows for it to move um, backwards. Sometimes I might put a constraint when I have a change order and I'm adding something to a schedule and I'm just past the status date. Then I might put it because it came out of nowhere, but I generally try to avoid constraints wherever possible. And as I mentioned, organize, which is, so that was number two. Number one was don't let the software tell you how to schedule. And number three is organize and group areas of work, as I mentioned. So you want that nice, clean work breakdown structure. And then under the groupings, you can have different um, elements of work. And the nice thing about that is that it also gives you headings that will tell you um, how long this slab on grade work is going to take in total. And it's not just adding these up. It's also looking at the sequencing and combination of activity. So it's not, uh, it's basically for from here to here, how many work days does it take to complete? Not necessarily adding these up, but how many in total? Because you may have, like in this instance, where you've got a bunch of things occurring at the same time. Well, if I add this plus this plus this plus this, you can see it doesn't add up to 17 days. It's going to tell me from the beginning of the first activity, rough in plumbing, to the end of the last activity, rough in telephone, how long is that going to take in work days, excluding non-working days like Saturdays, Sundays, holidays. So that's very, very helpful for those purposes. And if I'm actually doing a cost loaded schedule like this one is, I can click on my square icon box, click cost, and it'll give me summaries of the costs that are coming underneath, for example, substructure. So I know there's 125,000 currently budgeted to the sub uh, structure work. So it's also helpful to give me summaries at various areas of the work in those categories. Very, very helpful to have a good work breakdown structure. It also allocates that you won't miss an area of work. You're trying to frame it that you won't miss an area of work and you can standardize your headings for the different types of projects that you use within your company. Very helpful. Um, avoid open ends. Well, an open end is where something is not linked to something else and you want to have it linked. So for example, if I look at uh, this activity here, I've got drain, uh, subcon I've got the, the drain sub, water supply and roughing connection. So I can see that that's critical and that if I make this take longer, watch, it makes my project take longer. It affects all of those activities there, okay? And the successor task, and you might have to insert this column to see it. Uh, you can go insert column, type S for successor. That's how you insert a column. And you will see all the successors listed, right? So um, water supply rough in the successor activity is number 29, which is install perimeter rigid insulation. Well, Okay, so that's the successor. If I take that out and leave it blank, right, then it's just made something else critical. And this is not giving me the true finish date. Yet, it should be connected. And so watch, you know, if this was, say, 10 days, watch what happens over here. It's just going to push that out, but it's not going to push out the rest of the project. That's not how you want to run your project. That contravenes what I said. Don't let the software tell you how to schedule. Make sure you're telling the software how you want your project to be scheduled. Don't let it boss you, you boss it. It's a tool for you, right? So you don't want to be in reaction mode about those things. Now, I, I do sometimes get pushback from 
uh, some uh, site supers and project managers, and they'll say, well, it doesn't need to really hook up to anything for months, right? And I'll, I'll, re, I'll relink this here, watch what happens. Pushed everything a lot. It pushed everything a lot now because now that's representing the critical path, pushing it. Well, my answer to that is, okay, well, let's say this didn't connect to anything. In construction, it would connect much sooner, but let's say it didn't connect to anything till um, project closeout. Maybe it's uh, in the commissioning, the startup and testing. Well, if it didn't connect to anything till then, then connect it to that. Because my next question to you would be, do you need this to finish the project? And then usually they answer, yeah, of course, it's part of our contract. Well, then connect it to something near the end because otherwise, you're not going to be able to finish the project. That's not going to be completed. And at some point, it's going to become an urgent situation. Connected to what makes sense for you to run and drive your project. Keep that in mind. So avoid open ends for that reason. I've got a whole other video that sort of shows you the different ways that you can track that, observe for that, and make sure that you're not missing any. Um, Walk through your project from beginning to end. Well, if you meant to this much trouble of creating a, a schedule, why wouldn't you walk through it and see if everything makes sense, that the durations, that what it's connected to makes sense, the logic makes sense, activity, duration. Really review it carefully. Scheduling is like estimating and budgeting. You know, it's very finicky and one mistake can mean drastic differences in dates and finish dates and budgets and all kinds of things. So be pretty diligent to walk through your project. I usually will, I'm taking a page from lean construction methodology here uh, where we talk about pull planning. Um, I will usually uh, walk it through backwards from the completion to the beginning and then I will walk it through forwards again and I will check it in the network diagram. And the network diagram is giving me the actual uh, activities uh, in a network block. So I can see every activity and I can see their links and what, how they're uh, organized. For some people that can be really helpful for them uh, because they can see the project as it's flowing this way. I know uh, people that have clients and when they show the clients the network diagram, it makes a lot more sense to them than even the bar chart does. So the calculations for the critical path, it's all based on the network. Now all these floating parallelograms that you see, those are my headings. I don't want them connected, all right? So that's fine, they don't need to be connected. And make sure that when you're looking at the network diagram that you have everything opened up so that you can see all of the activities. So you do that and usually when you look at something a different way and there's a gap, you'll spot it. Sometimes if you keep looking at it the same way, what is it? Uh, if you keep doing the same thing the same way, uh, that's the definition of insanity when you expect a different result. Sometimes it's good to take a look at from a different perspective. And yes, get other people that are involved in your project to review it seriously as well. And that helps everybody get a better visualization of the project. So hopefully these uh, five uh, quick, uh, simple things to do when scheduling will help you to better professionalize uh, your schedule and to become better project managers and to be able to use MS Project to its fullest extent. I'll have a listing down below in the, in the description. And if you're interested in more, I'm trying to build a community. So feel free to comment. Uh, my focus is on the construction industry and construction sector. And you'll see that I have a lot of uh, videos on that if you subscribe to my link. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you in the future. And give me some comments, give me some feedback and also give me some ideas for videos that you would like to see. Obviously, you clicked here for a reason. What were you after with Microsoft Project? That helps to fuel some of my ideas. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.